Hello. Well, this is different. There also appears to be a picture of the previous place. Hey, it's 4.30. I could click that five times. Did I do it? It'd be, it would be funny if it worked there. So there's a nice little picture on the wall of what the game used to look like, and I guess now I'm here instead. Um. Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! I famously love to listen to you. Bye! I like work, I just hate my boss. Fair. I like my work. And I also hate my boss. Oh. You don't want to see the cool surprise I made for you? Well, fine. You're a dork anyway, so who cares? Wow. Okay, that does appear to be the previous areas. Maybe I do want to look at it. Instead of going back oh, to the normal place. Never mind. You're not a dork. Aw. Wow. Kiss and makeup. Coffee nut. Coffee's a bean, I think. I don't know if the bean is literal. The panda isn't literal in Red Panda, I think. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take uh. a look. This looks strangely dark, Soulsy. This okay, that doesn't. I call it the memory zone. Whoa. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Wow, what an honor. Glad I could indulge you and you being happy about your past. Oh man, I can't wait I can't wait for the slideshow part where I watch your slideshow and there's like pictures of your puppy and stuff and I pretend I'm paying attention. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013 when the game originally launched? <laughs> back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> it's all like, all the, there's all the different endings and stuff. And like that one, and like the choice between the two doors several times, because that shows up a lot. They're doing a commentary on re-releases and remakes constantly being worse than the original one. And then you hope you can go back to the old one. And sometimes you can't, like when Blizzard deletes the old one from existence. Oh, that was the weird collector's edition. Yeah. I saw the store that that was at. That, I think that's the... That physical edition was at the same place that sent me the physical edition of Banner Saga. And then I opened it up and I was like, this isn't a very good collector's edition. And then the company went out of business. I like to think that I did that. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't relish other people losing their jobs. But it just wasn't a very good collector's edition. It's like, here's a disc of Banner Saga in a little case. And then... A rubber statue of a Varl that wasn't very good. I don't think I can open that. But yeah, they have, they have the Steam page of the Stanley Parable. Was it the Stanley Parable where the guy screwed around with it? I think the, I think the developer put, uh, he put, uh, what's his name? The guy from Always Sunny and Matilda, Danny DeVito. I think he put Danny DeVito in the background of the of the header image, and he slightly increased the opacity every day until somebody made him stop. <laughs> just to see how long it would take for people to catch it or something. Our first kiss, my first car, the release of Stanley Parable in 2013. The time is 2013. This is obsessive. It's an entire gift shop focused entirely around the original game. The original remake. Oh, right, because it was a remake. Yeah. Because the game... Wasn't this game originally a... Uh, like, 
a mod for Half-Life or Counter-Strike or whatever, like a source mod. And then uh, then it became remade on Steam as a standalone. And now it's a remake of a remake. Linguists identify 15,000-year-old ultra-conserved words. Researchers identify two, two dozen words whose sound and meaning survived past 15,000 words. These don't seem that interesting. That might not be... That might just be for authenticity. Look, Firefox. I was going to say, look, some, back when people used Firefox, but I think that things might have gone back around to people saying Chrome bad, Firefox good. I've lost track. Wow. Art. <laughs> it's a re it's a vinyl record that has a picture of a CD on it. It's so fucking stupid. I love it. Smile because it happened. And like the demo was its own game too. What's funny is I played the demo and then it took me years to play the actual game. Oh, should I have played the demo of the deluxe edition? Shit. Maybe I should have. Because the demo was originally completely unique content. <laughs> Shit, sorry. Ugh. Unachievable. It's impossible to get this achievement. Don't play for five years. I know somebody who got that. I don't care enough long term to focus on that stuff. Creator's surprisingly down to earth. This is just self flattery. Like a ton of it. Tough choices. Was it tough choices? It really wasn't. Just some weird shit. Little Stanley's dead. No! Wait, it's a little pet. No! Dead gerbil or something. Hamster. Is that background painted? I think it is. Oh. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, <laughs> and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Imagine playing, imagine playing this part and you are Sterling. <laughs> like, I'm sure they have by now. They've definitely played this part by now. What a fucking day they had. <laughs> yeah, this portal. Which I guess isn't in the game anymore because they replaced it with the... With the Firewatch. I I think I might have picked the perfect thing to try before the new content. Because I saw the thing that used to be Portal and Half-Life uh, and Minecraft. And now it's uh, Firewatch and Rocket League. <laughs> Couldn't get the rights to Fortnite. <laughs> do they get the rights each time they do this? Or is it parody? I don't know. Per Person of the Year is a blurry picture of Stanley prob probably. Oh, well, that's some behind-the-scenes stuff, isn't it? Should I go up or down? Okay, it looks concerning down here. Memory zone maintenance. No, your city. I can't read that. Bunch of numbers. What is happening? For Scott K. A picture of a picture of <laughs> it's not just a picture of somebody playing Stanley Parable on a computer but it's a they're playing in a windowed mode 
It's just too much. On a Mac? Ugh. I don't care. It's fine. Play on Mac. Okay, that collector's edition has more than the one that I got. That's definitely some stuff. Is that, is that a two-disc soundtrack? No, that's the installed discs or something, isn't it? I don't know. It's got a weird... Like, they, they screw around a lot, I guess. But the cover reminds me of, like, an operating system, not a video game. Which they probably did on purpose, too. Those knobs are way too close together. I feel like they're gonna knock into each other when you... Ah, the red and blue doors are up on a stage. The ones I just went through. The greatest wealth is memory. Oh, now I'm locked in here. People play games because of what they can do inside of them, and your game is very good at letting them know they can't do anything. Literally anything. <laughs> oh, those are missing. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. The good, the bad, no bad, the zero bad. <laughs> I'm enjoying how dumb this is. The commentary. Repairing snake oil salesman routine. Wow. I wish I had a great memory of all the endings, but it's been a long time. Well, that's all blocked off, isn't it? The serious room. <laughs> all right. Oh, I just go these back? were simpler times, Stanley. Uh -oh. What I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Uh. Is this? St oh no, they say Steam reviews. Oh no, no, don't put me in here. Don't put me in Steam reviews. Those guys are oh, awful. No. Oh god, no. No. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. No. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely uh, these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? No. No. Uh, don't do this to me. They're so frustrating. No, I know people are like, oh, listen to the audience and not the critics. No, critics have some level of expected, like, quality level. Like, they, they have a job to keep. St Ugh, rando reviews are so frustrating. Especially for games that actually do anything interesting ever. Recommend them, we're not gonna read that I one. I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, <laughs> with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. There's... There's so many Steam reviews. Don't do this, man. Don't do this. Uh -huh. They're all leaking out. A deluge of obtuse bullshit. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. <laughs> These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. Welcome. I feel 
like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Congratulations, Noodle Shafe. You are, uh, Stanley Parable famous now. Wait, you can, you can see the avatars on even the blurred... Oh, it's the same one, though. Well, like, I wonder if you can tell who that person is in the, in the blurred example. That's really funny. Where are we going? To hell? I'm trapped. No. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. That's a skip not self-contradictory. Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Oh no, we're gonna Adam Sandler's click? This is not a good ending. This can't go well. Um... Wait, it's a physical location? It's not, the skip button isn't a thing I hold? Hello. I like that there's always details hidden away behind the dumb places you can check. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore. <laughs> oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and wow. lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps... He's gonna do it again. ...nation and more of a treatise. <laughs> or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you... Is this what people do to my videos? <laughs> so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've... Okay, he doesn't say anything. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the Dad? power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's... <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. Oh, no. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? We're going to Junji Ito. Unendurable. The long dream. But it's, the door's gone. There's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait. How do we get Narrator out? door. Where did the door go? Narrator was door. A door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button. Please stop repeating Stanley, yourself. Stanley, Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. <laughs> You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely... I'm leaving him alone with his thoughts till he loses his mind. Angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. Oh, Stanley, you're back. 
You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. <laughs> That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. The clock's not I'm moving. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I Aww. needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. Same. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can Please hear stop me. summarizing my entire life. It's going to make me freak out. You can hear me. Then maybe it means I'm real. No. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps. Yeah. This is an attack. Perhaps I'm under attack right now. This whole time that if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. Yeet. When you. Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months, I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust. I feel like the bad guy. Oh no. Silence. Now I just get to die here. In the abyss. I heard something move, I think. I heard some sounds. Oh. I think that's the air conditioner. Uh, am I gonna, am I about to heat death the universe? Maybe I'll do the Futurama thing where I loop all the way back around to the next universe. Ah. Uh, no! How long has that been going off? <laughs> the clock still hasn't actually really moved. Ah. Uh. I mean, I've got to skip this one. Maybe the batteries will run out. But they didn't understand. Ah. The game was never meant Hi. to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They <laughs> gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. 
the most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people, because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this, we require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about any of this. I'm at peace with it. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collected discourse. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized. At last I am free to truly think. To feel it must be that they were so discontent with themselves, they couldn't help but leave a negative review on Steam. Perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me. Perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters, and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison, perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down. This, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny, that it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor, that it amused them endlessly from start to finish. But they didn't understand the game was never made he to does be funny. Loop. It was meant to have a point. It... He does loop eventually. He was just more entertaining this time. I'm like, oh no, he became more entertaining and coherent via loneliness. Uh, sharper dialogue. Oh no. It's me again. The end is never 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 He's probably fine. Oh, it's leaking over here now. I like the broom closet ending. The broom closet ending's my favorite. I right, so soon we'll outlive the room. That'll be useful for me leaving eventually. You can't keep me in here forever, concrete. Ah, uh, not good enough, but we're on our way. I think his brain broke. Except he's not real. This is this path. I feel bad for him. Oh, that's beautiful. It's, it reminds me of what was so nice about Portal 2. Breaking up all that cold whiteness with all this chaos. The massive leap forward. Oh. Why are the sounds outside distressing now? No. No, the outside world isn't promising anymore. What happened? Oh no. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster. Now I don't want to go out there. Something's wrong. Oh. Oh. Unexpected. Oh.
The end is never the end, 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 is never the end. So I think the plants are gone. I guess, yeah, I guess every leap forward went further. I'll head towards that mountain. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it just throws me back like nothing fucking happened. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm -hmm.